This week on Good For You, friends don't let friends sell their bar mitzvah necklace or their wedding shoes. Or their bat mitzvah necklace. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is Although correct. men can have bar mitzvah necklaces for sure. Don't Work. shame them. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Good, Good For you. you. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. For you, a podcast about the things we go to, the purchases that haunt us, the best products, services, and industry happenings in the wellness, well being, and spiritual space. We're going to give you a healthy little dose of fun. We're going to talk about the things that are happening in pop culture, the ones that got away, the things in our cart that are haunting us or ghosting us, our strong opinions that are loosely held. <laughs> we like to call this the Grex, the group text. The group text in your ear. So come say hello. Join us in the audio Grex, where friends don't let friends get, get scammed. scammed. You ready? Are we recording? We're video, yes. And audio. And audio. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> everywhere, all at once. <laughs> okay. ASMR. <laughs> I like that you do that every time. <laughs> That's an ASMR thing, you know. Okay, I'm going to pour some out for myself. Oh, <laughs> I don't like that visual. <laughs> it's like dark brown. <laughs> okay, uh, here you go. Thanks. I'm so excited. <laughs> Can't wait. Mm. Okay, so at first glance, what do you <laughs> what do you what do you notice? Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It could be it it could almost be that like type of brown right at the beginning of a the your period, period. you're like <laughs> i don't know this is gonna be am i spotting or am i getting my period yeah like are you okay uterus <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're stale <laughs> yeah that's what i think i'm yeah, like girl old. are you okay <laughs> yeah. it's been a while <laughs> yeah, exactly get it out <laughs> just let it out just let yeah. it out babe so that was the first thought it truly notes smells of, like chocolate pudding to me notes of nesquik mm -hmm. i'm not mad okay Can well chocolate okay cheers Hmm. Chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> Think about what often is coming in cans these days. Maybe a morning beverage that's cold but also served hot. Oh, 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 coffee. <laughs> that's right. Something. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> keto coffee. It's keto. Oh, is am I drinking Ethan's beverage? <laughs> Did I steal from I just like Ethan's? soft launch Ethan's beverage. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm stealing from like his supply. No, no. Mm. I got this for us long ago. Oh. Oh bless you, bunny. Fawn's in the house. <laughs> She's like, Don't forget. Yeah. Is this a minor figures drink? Whoa. <laughs> no. It's the branding's really bad. Um, I think that you I don't think you're gonna guess it, but it's an it's an it's an alternative milk that you've never seen. Is it nut based? No. A legume. No. A grain. No. Technically, it's a fruit. Oh. But it's keto. This is avocado keto coffee. Wait, I feel like you and Ethan tried this. Once. We did. Is it the same one? Yeah. Is this repeat? Yeah. <laughs> but you guys kind of liked it. Oh um, yeah. You know what I remember <laughs> Ethan saying? I was like, this is. This is coming from a true, tried and true keto person. Yeah. He's like, I, it could be thicker. Give, <laughs> give me your, more avocado. <laughs> That's what Disgusting. he wanted. I like a thick <laughs> beverage. I, I personally don't love a thick coffee, but that's me. I think like a lot of women really want to drink something that's like medium thick. I like the idea of just like sucking down one of these little things. But like in this case, I really do hate water. Like I hate it. It's like very exciting to be trying a new beverage. I like water, but I want that sour taste that like only yogurt can bring. So what and there's like a slight bitterness at the end from I don't know what, maybe like the avocado. Mm -hmm. That it's not for me. I, once again. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You don't. <laughs> There's a few that we've agreed on. <laughs> yeah. What have we? Tabache. Yeah. Tabache. Yeah. I think that's it. You know, I think the thing with this is tastes fine cold, mm -hmm. but it's one of those as soon as it goes even slightly lukewarm, you're like, mm. like this is honestly, yeah. it's a bit it's tepid. On the, uh, it's on the edge. Do you know what I ordered yesterday? 
Wow. It was so hot outside. Started breezing? Yeah. I, we were like driving around and I was like, we need to stop and get a milkshake. It's oh. too hot. And I was like, wait, I'm tired. So let's go to Starbucks. <laughs> but I'm really tired. Let me, get a, <laughs> let me get a milkshake with coffee in it. I almost didn't because I almost had an aneurysm because I was reading about the New York Times. And <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> before I had my coffee milkshake. I sent you a screenshot. I sent yeah. you a picture because I was so frustrated. It it was kind of the perfect Sunday piece of content. <laughs> it was something, I'll tell you that. The New York Times had an article this week on Sunday about claw clips and how they're making a comeback. And they were big in like, you know, the Friends era. Jennifer Aniston always had one with like a little fountain of hair that would pop out the back. It was so cute. Yeah. So that was what the article was about and how they have exploded over with Gen Z. And mm. just in the internet in general, everyone loves a claw clip. Wow. And now they are making bigger claw clips than they used to because there's people who have thicker hair. <laughs> than ever? <laughs> we now have thicker hair than what? ever. <laughs> that I was just like, as I was reading, I was like, I can't believe I'm reading this. <laughs> like, th- I can't believe someone wrote this and then turned it in and was like, publish this in the New York Times. <laughs> you know? It was in the style section or which section? Might have been, might have been arts and leisure. No, I think it was like business. <laughs> Yeah. The business of claw clips. Because they were talking about like, oh, we've seen a 495% increase in claw clip searches <laughs> over the last year. And like, okay. Yeah, going from two to like 8,000 yeah. <laughs> is a lot more, obviously. But the real kicker was the last couple paragraphs. It was oh. the conclusion of the article in which they obviously had been talking of claw clips. So I guess they were looking for like someone who hates claw clips. Oh, yes. They're like, let's hear the opposing side. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we got it. We can't be biased here at the New York Times. <laughs> okay, guys. So they found someone who was like, yeah, I was wearing a claw clip in the car. And I was sitting in the front seat and we got in a car accident and we heard a crack. And we thought it was our windshield. And then I looked back and I realized my claw clip had exploded because our head hit the back of the seat. And she's like, so I just don't wear claw clips in the car anymore. And like, that was how the article ended. And I was like, I'm sorry, this is not a conclusion. Like, what is going on here? Like, what? <laughs> it was so weird. Oh and my gosh. It was, it, when it was, it, she wasn't injured. And she wasn't even like, you know what? I'm not going to wear claw clips. It was just, I I'm not going to wear them in the car. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was like the claw clip went into her brain. One would think <laughs> that would have been a better story. <laughs> I feel like this would be that that would be a great, you know, the local police blotters. <laughs> <laughs> that was what it reminded. I was like, this is local paper fodder. Uh, woman gets into car accident. <laughs> claw clip explodes. Yeah. <laughs> or woman saved by claw clip. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it would be. <laughs> now that's a story I want to yeah, yeah, that's the news you can use. Yeah, there you go. I wonder if they're so slow to approve stories that this was approved like 18 months ago, and it's you know that's just where they're at with their. They put out the daily every day. News and interest. They put out the they, they, You know, it's just. I don't they, know. They don't, don't take know. fashion seriously. <laughs> I don't know, but I was just like New York Times. You were like <laughs> back we're, at it. Or you're like, you're right on time. Thank you for <laughs> consistent trend tardiness. Yeah. At least they're consistent in that. It's true. Once I see something in, New York, in the New York Times, I'm like, okay, great. Not part of our lives anymore. Like, yeah, not, not cool. Yeah. If I, if I was cool. thinking about it, I'm definitely not going to anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're probably going to talk about Boston Birkenstocks in, like, you know, a couple mm, months. This is true. And we're going to have to... Although I'm not buying any. I'm not buying Boston Birkenstocks. I actually do have a plastic, like the plastic pl- player. Mm-hmm. And they're okay. They have lasted a long time. Now. They're my house shoes. Yeah, I think, you know, that's how Ethan, e- both of Ethan's parents have the Boston Birkenstocks and live in Boston. Oh. And they've been the shoes that they wear, house shoes, for like the last 20 years. So Actually, same with my parents. They seem to have a lot of not uncommon these people. <laughs> sort of a East Coast <laughs> vibe. Yeah. I feel like if you can pick it up in the L.L. Bean catalog. Mm, yes. Which, honestly, L.L. Bean doesn't really go out of style. They've really captured the classic mantle that they've been looking for. I was kind of obsessed with L.L. Bean in college. Sort of doing a high-low mm. L.L. Bean thing. You know, it's something I've discovered more in America. Really? We could get it in Canada, but definitely more expensive. The taxes. Uh, There's so much import tax in Canada. That so makes sense. Unless they have a location, which I think they need. They do to. in Maine. Yeah. I actually, a friend from college, his dad, he sourced all of the fabric for L.L. Bean. Oh, that's cool. Such an interesting job. Yeah, that's really interesting. Speaking of fabric. Speaking of. Speaking of new things. Did you see this article on The Real Real in New York Mag? 
Yes. <laughs> we exchanged a little bit about this in the Grext. We sure did. Titled, The Real Real is a Total Mess. Huh? If you don't know, The Real Real is a consignment marketplace. L- yeah, like a luxury consignment. Luxury, exactly. And it's beautiful. It's yeah. like so aesthetic. It really stands out in a sea of Poshmarks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been around for a while. I remember yeah. my first startup job when our first biz dev person came from the real real and she was like one of the first five employees there mm. and i'd never heard of it but it was like a big deal that we got her they started in the 2014 15 oh it says 2011 that makes it even more interesting but who is this good for this is our good for who of the week good for you good for you good for, you? Good for who good for you yes because there's a lot happening here that we've talked about in this podcast obviously consumption buying things online why we buy and re- the real real like really sort of like launched ahead of its competitors because it made the shopping experience so fun but like also like tinder great user experience mm-hmm. on a really good site right where you could find a chanel bag for two hundred dollars and it was in pretty good condition or you know like an oscar de la renta dress mm-hmm. or you could also find like some acme jeans whatever acne jeans from like super super expensive to whatever and people got obsessed with it drops happened twice daily from at 10 a.m and 7 p.m and people would like set their alarms like the way that they used to with soul cycle in order to sign up for class and what's so interesting about this to me is like it kind of perpetuates the fast fashion mm-hmm. of it all of like that super consumption looking for a deal just buying 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 because you don't want to miss out mm-hmm. fomo mm-hmm. And what happens in the wake of that and trying to keep up with that while also being like luxury, quote unquote, and sustainable, quote unquote, because you're reselling clothes, even though we know that like consignment and thrifting is barely, barely marginally better than just honestly fast fashion. It's fascinatingly complex topic, but I I feel like what we've learned throughout doing research into all of these platforms is really disheartening (laughs) oh my god there's this episode we're gonna link to from close horse this podcast and it talks well this episode in particular like you should go listen to everything (laughs) but it's so good oh my god she's so smart and such an expert but this one episode in particular is on rental markets and subscriptions like newly and what are the other ones rent rent the runway blah 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 like all of those rentals and how like they're pushed as being sustainable but they're actually worse than buying fast fashion i mean when she gets down to it in brass tacks you'd be better off throwing your clothes away which is so sad <laughs> yeah it's horrible. like actually just <laughs> discarding it's, them. it's horrible but all of this like sort of pressure to get the real real number one for people who wanted to shop yeah. like fast fashion shein style mm-hmm. And also, of course, venture capital, which tends to be a theme in these companies or businesses that like really struggle because they grow super fast and then they can't keep up. What ended up happening at the real real is it was basically, quote unquote, a dumpster fire. Yes. <laughs> well, t- okay, so There's so much that went wrong. So many is going things. wrong. The the writer of this article is Emilia Petrarca. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but there's a few quotes in here I love. One of them being that they describe the real real as being conceived by former Pets.com CEO Julie Wainwright as effectively a place where Silicon Valley bosses could safely and easily swap their Chanel. When I joined in 2015, it cheerfully took everything I bought too. And so a lot of the story that she's chronicling is how quickly you could send your stuff, get it listed, and people would buy it. Mm -hmm. Like with, to your point about the drops, people were online waiting for drops to buy things. People were selling things really quickly. And then over the years, this started to slow down and slow down and slow down for multiple reasons. But things were getting lost. People Mm -hmm. were quitting, you know, thousands of dollars in clothing were just going missing. Oh, yeah. They have this crazy story about a client whose $10,000 mess bag mysteriously disappeared en route to their warehouse and they couldn't, um, they just so never, <laughs> found, never found it. And another manager's client had a few hundred items get lost in the real reels custody. And the thing about the real reel is it makes it easy for lazy people like us to mm. 
con- you know, participate in consignment because you don't have to merchandise. You don't have to take pictures. You don't have to wa- even wash your stuff, right? You can just send it to the real rail. The real rail. They'll clean it up. They'll authenticate it. They'll take pictures. But there's a really funny picture picture in the article of a pair of shorts that yeah. <laughs> styled as like a top. Yeah, that they're like saying is a weird top yeah. from from some brand. And it's like no, that's a pair of like just shorts. Yeah like running shorts well i think about the people who are doing that i think so many of these companies are sold as like oh we're revolutionizing it with our tech with ai and it's like it's not ai it's not ai (laughs) it's people taking photos who are really tired who are not trained yeah if you need to display these clothes on mannequins and you're gonna go about it that way that is so much fucking work oh my god i can't even fold my clothes (laughs) an insane amount of production yeah happening behind the scenes and the fact that they try and pass it off as this super scalable tech makes no sense it's it right it doesn't make any sense and i'm sure they have insane quotas of what they need to photograph and put up every day and it's probably just really exhausting really awful work a hundred percent it looks like the real real is really struggling. They IPO'd in 2019 and they have 16 retail spaces in total, oh, wow. which is kind of, I mean, That's like they've lot. totally scaled. It's really interesting. But just like we've talked about Rent the Runway, they yeah. IPO'd as well. They're not a profitable business. No. Resale is very tough. Poshmark, ThreadUp, the real real, Rent the Runway, none of these companies are profitable. In fact, the, the real real reported a net loss of over 50 million in a recent quarter, like in a quarter alone, because they just can't keep up with demand. And it seems like everything's falling apart from the inside. And of course, customers are also like, this is kind of fucked up. My Oscar de la Renta dress is getting that's $8,000 is getting priced at $200. And that's that's not right. But also it's addicting if you ever i mean like you guys oh go gosh. on the real and it's just addicting. shop around there's a lot of stuff and i just thought think this is so interesting because i it's no matter how hard we try like pulling out of that fast fashion uber consumption fomo like marketing 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 yeah. is so challenging yeah you know well it's at it's kind of this the marketing of it is this is going to help solve this issue and it's like, well, no, actually, <laughs> our issue is consumption, period. Yeah. And this is just a new form of it that's totally greenwashed. And in this same episode of The Clothes Horse, she mentions at the beginning that the average rate of consumption of U.S. Yeah. An average by 70 new pieces of clothing a year. And she talks about how, you know, even if you're listening, being like, what? I definitely don't. What that actually means, obviously, is that someone else is buying 140. (laughs) Someone else is buying 2100. And ultimately, that means that's five new pieces of clothing every five days. Yeah, That's about it. Yeah. That's insane. That's crazy. And and I really appreciate also that she points out the complex complexities of this as again being an individual problem that we need to solve it's more of like yes this is a collective issue that is presented to us in so many different ways it's so hard to fight against Mm -hmm. and it's not you know black or white but it's this is not the solve unfortunately yeah the instant gratification part is the most interesting piece to me of like the dopamine hits of online shopping in general Mm -hmm. totally and (laughs) <laughs> yeah and just like I create this sort of like pseudo demand in my head because yeah. I'm seeing something maybe like on a TikTok trend right and then I've seen it 30 times in three minutes two minutes because that's how media works and now I I desperately want it I can't get it out of my head and I have access to all these places where I can get it pretty cheaply yeah. a lot of the time whether it's ethical or not or a place like the real rail and almost instantly you can get things delivered from the real rail in la same day really so who is first off do you think the real rail is going to survive i have so. lost so much money in the past yeah. and they're not profitable yet no it's I pretty scary i don't think they're i don't think this is sustainable on so many levels from what we know i think of even using poshmark mercari depop i don't know maybe if you feel differently about depop but i'm like this is not sustainable for anyone here well depop i feel like it's sustainable because i don't think well, you you yeah. pay for shipping yeah. Yeah. like it's kind of all it's kind of like kind of like etsy it's yeah all built it's in. part of etsy now actually etsy Great example because they did IPO and then they really scaled back their business. Yeah. 
They yeah. figured a lot of stuff out. Etsy's a really smart, healthy business, mm-hmm. I think. But I at think least so. from yeah. what I know. Yeah. And Depop too. And I think the middleman of like, oh, having basically like dumping. I mean, imagine if you like dumped all your stuff at Crossroads and they're like, yeah, we'll actually sell this for you <laughs> instead of like embarrassing you and only taking one thing from you. Yeah, I think that drop off doesn't help with this whole idea of how much labor is involved totally. and that we think it can all be automated. Actually, Crossroads doesn't take drop offs anymore as really? of two weeks ago. Oh, <gasps> really? I just sent in my stuff. Oh, I wonder if they do mail in. Yeah, I do mail in. I wonder if they're still, they probably haven't, just haven't gotten there yet. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to stop doing mail in. It takes a really long time. It, it takes like at least six weeks to get money oh, back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're only now doing selling live in store. Because wow. they couldn't keep up with the drop-offs. That makes sense. Which totally makes sense, but I'm also kind of like, wow, that just, like, we just have too much fucking stuff. Yeah, and I think it you deep, you get, like, depersonalized yes, from it or desensitized exactly. when you can just yeah. say, like, no, it's out of my, it's out of my car. Yeah. I don't need to do it. And it, yeah. of course, like, makes your life a lot easier. But yeah. this is another, to me, example of, like, venture capitalism. <laughs> That's fucking shut up. <laughs> that totally. isn't thinking about the repercussions of... I think that the real real should like stick to true luxury products, yeah, you know, yeah. like designer products. Also, I wonder how they're treating their people because it sounds like people were leaving left, right, and center. Doesn't sound, doesn't sound it doesn't like a good sound time. <laughs> oh, yeah. The quote that I was struck by <laughs> was the journalist was talking to a buyer. Oh, yeah. This is scary. Yeah. And they said, I'd have to say to someone, Do you have anything in your closet? Let's walk through it. Do you want your wedding shoes? No, you don't. Get rid of that watch for your 16th birthday. You don't need that jewelry from your bat mitzvah. Like trying to convince people to sell it's their like Marie shirt. Kondo on crack. Yeah, yeah. I guess I don't need my wedding shoes. Fine. Do know. you want the first picture of your child that's yeah. ever been taken in this Tiffany that. frame? No, we can, we can sell it. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Good for who? Good for you. Who's yes. this good for? This potential downfall of of the real real. I think this is good for our collective <laughs> consciousness when it comes to sustainability and fashion. I think that's what it's good for. <laughs> where we're like, wait, there is nothing <laughs> sustainable in this yeah, realm. We keep getting like beat over the head <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a pair of Louboutins, man. We're just but what if what if we say it's made by water bottles? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what if it's seafoam? Yeah. <laughs> What if they have a little recycling thing on the branding? Yeah. What if we just paint it green? (laughs) (laughs) Use sexy science words. What if it's compostable over 2,000 years? One day. (laughs) It's kind of depressing, but the Clothes Horse podcast goes really deep into this whole It's really intense, but it's really good if you are curious. It won't make you feel better. No, but, no. but it might actually make you feel better about buying clothes because the subscription thing is almost worse. Also, the idea of there are Zara shipments being shipped across the ocean that people are finishing the garments while they're being shipped <laughs> yeah. to get them into stores because of this insane. We've all we've created these monsters. We need to slow down, people. <laughs> <laughs> we need to remember what's important. But I do think transparency and yeah, like yeah. this goes. This is, sounds so stupid, but like storytelling about this stuff. Yeah. Like this story is so well written. It's yes. so good. It's so it vivid. Good. I would listen yeah. to an entire podcast season. Mm-hmm. I would watch a documentary on this shit. And it does make me second guess and think about, wow, do I want to participate in those types of things? I think I'm going to have to buy it. I'm thinking about what my wardrobe is going to be when the I'm like... The answer is I have to buy a new wardrobe. I know. Here's what I... Here's the answer. It's gonna, I'm just going to buy new stuff. But I'm thinking about like, no, yeah. you know, my body is changing and I'm like, what am, am I going to have any clothes to wear <laughs> in like two months? What am I going to do? And I'm not going to have like all the time in the world to go thrift and to blah, blah, blah. So I'm trying to figure out like... Hopefully I can fit into my old clothes, Dresses. but maybe I won't. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, it's true because then it, y- you want to have items that can last a long time and that can be, you know, staples in your closet. Of course. But then sometimes. We're mutable beings. Yes. We change you know, our minds. In we every way. Our, style. our bodies change. <laughs> yeah. It's But I, I feel better for knowing this. Yeah. And I feel better for deleting the Poshmark <laughs> app off of my phone so that they can stop making push notifications about all the parties that I'm missing. They are like internet Tupperware parties, man. Yes. What is that about? They're like so-and-so sellers throwing a blah, blah, blah party. (laughs) And you're like, I'm not even following this person. Or am I? Like, I don't know them. 
And how did these notifications make it through? I had no <laughs> notifications on my phone. <laughs> and then I'm like distracted by Wait. some dumbass Poshmark party. Wait, I had that with Twitter for some reason. And uh. I kept getting local news and it'd be like, <laughs> woman's head gets chopped <gasps> off, literally, no. with a sword. In, like, in, in <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in like La Cañada or something. Of no, course. but like La still, Cignata. still scary. Like, like, I was just like, I did not opt into this at all. I don't even follow. I was like, maybe I'm following ABC Seven. I was just getting this broadcast, and I was like, I'm not. How did you guys do that? Anyway, good for us, maybe this yeah. article and the real world potentially going under. I hope they don't, because I hope people don't lose their jobs. But I hope yeah. things shape up, ship shape, <laughs> shape it up, guys. Yeah, get those sketchers. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> you know, tone it. Yeah, tone it up. <laughs> if you can't tan it, tone it, mm. or vice versa. If you can't tone it, tan it. Jim tan laundry. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> That's the message for you, real, real. <laughs> Cabs here. <laughs> I think it's tough to be alive now. I think societal collapse is in the air. It smells like it. Moving on, we have a special guest. We're delighted. Sorry, you thought the episode was over, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> never stop, never stopping. <laughs> we have Lauren Haynes from the famed Wooden, wooden Spoon Ebbs. Mm-hmm. We're I mean, iconic. Truly. I mean, Lauren is fan- fantastic in every sense of the word. As a business owner, she's a fucking baller. <laughs> like, she's so cool. She's so smart. She has such a healthy, cool business. And she's, so funny. she's growing more and more and more, her yeah. businesses. And they have some venture capital. And she did not take that decision lightly. Mm-hmm. And we talk about a sexy neck scan or some that she's seen, maybe. She's, she's got her finger fun. on the pulse. She does. She I would say that. she's a wellness hype beast, just like us. Oh, yes. A super consumer. Yes. Yes. And she's got some sexy neck scams, like Paul said. She tells us her haunted cart, which ta- is a good one. It's good. We talk about some fall trends that we're thinking about. Yeah. You know, I, w- I was thinking about this after her haunted cart, and I was like, I do, do like to hear about people's haunted fashion carts. I do like that a lot. I mean, hers is pretty unique. And here's Lauren. Lauren, welcome to Good For You. We are so excited to have you here. What a true honor to have you on the podcast because you are a badass. You are an herbalist. You are hilarious. And you're also the founder and CEO and business runner of Wooden Spoon Herbs. I'm so happy to be here. I love this pod. I'm, we appreciate we're that. still shocked people listen to it. <laughs> we really are. I know the feeling, yeah. <laughs> and you just took a big guzzle of what looked like a delicious beverage. Could you please share it with beverage girlies? Oh, no. Thank you for asking. I'm not an Ourobora girly nor are we we've tried it okay good i was nervous i was nervous <laughs> you know and i love a weird flavor but i think just the natural the more natural the better like i'm a huge i'll come back to this beverage i have a lot to say about bevs vibes is my favorite flavored beverage the cbd oh the kind of expensive one but they just came out with a, with Mood, a can right they did they came out with a can so kind of how recess did cbd and then magnesium they did they have the cbd and now the mood is l-tyrosine l-theanine ashwagandha and rhodiola which is a wild stack if you ask me but okay whoa the kind of like uh doing the opposite things there yes ma'am doing the opposite things which is why <laughs> herbs make people feel weird sometimes yes <laughs> On the vibes note, I once had one of their CBD lemonades and I could not leave the beach. I became incorporated into the sand. I missed an appointment. I was like, no, you vibed too close to the sand. I vibe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I became one with the sand. I could not get up and I have not touched a vibes drink since. I am so sorry I brought it up. This is a <laughs> Minna sparkling tea. It is Ooh. peach, green tea, and yuzu. That sounds good. That sounds like a healthy mm. peach iced tea sna- snapple. Yeah, exactly. I love a yuzu but sparkling. note. Yeah, mm. oh, love that. So okay, we got to try that one. All right, Lauren, we know that you have strong opinions, and we love that. And we want to hear what's been just grinding your gears as of late. How about how many scams do, would you say that you come across in a day as someone who's in CPG and who's like, you know, also kind of in tapped into oh. venture capital and like what's getting investment? Like, what would you say the average count is? Oh, 34 daily. <laughs> 34 daily. <laughs> it's just really funny to me. I saw, okay. When you talk about athletic greens, athletic greens is crazy to me. Yeah. Can you expose athletic greens, please? Because I feel beaten down at 
at least it's everywhere once, now. Once every yeah, two weeks, I consider purchasing it. Do you really? But I never have. I hear it advertised that much that wow. I feel worn down by it by people who I'm like. They're also drinking that every day. My only feedback is a couple of things. Well, a couple of things. My only feedback is this laundry <laughs> list of things that I hate about it. Hold on. <laughs> I hear that it doesn't taste good. I haven't actually tried it. Whatever, whatever. But I think what's funny to me is just like their list of like adaptogens, which like ask any, you know, real herbalist and they'll be like, none of those are adaptogens. What are you talking about? So that is kind of the thing for me where it's just like, okay, it's fine to take all these things every day, but you're saying it's like a multivitamin and this is why. And it's just like kind of a hodgepodge of herbs. And also I saw this ad, this like billboard that they did that said, if we don't make it, you don't need it. And that offended me so hard. I was just like, that's just too hard. I saw a lot of ads in New York, like Mm -hmm. a lot of billboards in New York or side of Mm -hmm. building. I think it's cool. They're doing good. I honestly think that like, even though there's an oversaturation of like people trying to start brands in the wellness space, I do actually believe that anyone's entry point into like herbs and wellness is cool and like valid. So I think it's on the one hand, a good thing because there's so much education needed to like take supplements and be into them that everyone doing the lift kind of is nice sometimes. A rising tide floats all boats. That's the one. As they say. <laughs> That's yep. a great POV. I respect yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. I do think that Athletic Greens has to come out with more skews because like what? Everyone's just going to be drinking the green, ju- the green powder. That's it. Like it's not interesting. It just feels pricey, but... You know what I prefer? I prefer eight greens. I think that is a much more beautiful brand. Like eight greens and too. their formats are so nice. They have the effervescent and the gummies and the lollipop. Those are really cool. Oh, I agree. Okay. With you. I think it, and it's female found, female founded. I think. Yeah, it's great it's brand. Mm-hmm. Adds to cart. Mm-hmm. Okay. Eight greens. <laughs> Looking at a, I have a haunted cart of caffeinated greens, which I deeply want to try. What's that? It's just called caffeinated greens. <laughs> <laughs> like green tea. Well, it sounds like I throw no, up. No, no. It's like a green powder. It's a greens powder. They have one that's uncaffeinated and one that's caffeinated. But I'm sort of a slut for chlorella, I realize. Just like oh, yeah. anything that chlorella is in or just adding raw, like raw dog and chlorella to my smoothie is like correct for me. I feel alive How when, do you I, use when it? I take chlorella. I just scoop it into my smoothie and then I make it make the smoothie and it's like deep green. And it, I'm just like, like I had a chlorella smoothie last night and the baby was like, inside my uterus because like as soon as i drank it he was just like yes i am growing yeah (laughs) he grew another wrinkle in his brain um yeah that one really makes me feel alive cool Mm. love to hear it they've done studies you know 60 percent of the time it works every time that doesn't make sense all right on on deck for lauren's top sexy unique scam what are you eyeing what are you whiffing Something that I've been curious about, and you guys maybe know about this. Have you heard of Nessie, the wellness credit card? Yes. I'm in Communicado with their one of their directors. Interesting. I think it's a really cute idea. Like enough where I was like, okay, sign me up for your newsletter. Put me on the list. Let's figure it out. Because I definitely am someone who spends money on supplements, massage, like, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. So Nessie is like a credit card that gives you cash back when you spend money on certain quote unquote wellness expenses. So that is yet to be determined. I don't think they've actually released any of these cards. They're collecting people on their list for like the beta testing, I would imagine, but I want their newsletter, which is really fun. So yeah, it's good. You know, the guy who started it started greatest that website Ah. that was kind of popular in like the, like around 2010. And then he sold greatest to somebody, but they're a good SEO wellness website. Oh, interesting. I've also seen it's not called plastic card because that would be antithetical to what it's doing. But there's one that is focused on climate activism and I forget exactly what it's called, but it seems like that space in general is trying to do a lot of different things. I'm curious. I wonder when it'll come out. Yeah, me too. Me too. But for now, I'm just enjoying the, her roundups. It seems like maybe skewed towards good roundups. a younger, on their newsletter, like a younger mm-hmm. audience, like I'm 33 and just the way they're kind of talking, it's like, sometimes it's like maybe aim towards college age people, which is awesome. Cause I think those are the people who are starting to like think about their financial, you know, future, but yeah, I've really been enjoying that. It's cool. on the radar. 
time will tell if it's a sexy unique scam for sure have no choice but to stand like they may not ever have the credit card i'm just like how are they making money yeah. i mean i get the credit That's- card but that is a good question of like, well, how is this a viable business? Mm-hmm. And like, how are you doing this? Because it would be amazing to get points back for like my massages and my class pass and wooden spoon herbs, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. But how? You know, how do they do it? You let me know when you, think- ask, when you ask them. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll try to get the load on for, for, for you. Yeah. Seriously. I'll see if we can get in the early beta. I'd love that. Because you're an influencer. Yes. Like, you know, we're all influencers here. Everyone listening to this podcast is an influencer. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. What I'm really here for is I want to know what's in your haunted cart because you, like, even the way you were like, how do you take chlorella? You are <laughs> like me in, in that you're like, nah, how, how exactly? And like, is this going to be better? And what kind of, what's the right, what's the right way to do this? And I want to try everything. I've only choked down those dry little chlorella tablets and I always choke on them. So I'm curious, oh, like how, pellets. what can I learn yeah, from you? Those are pellets. No, no pellets are not Ooh. it. That is not, that that's is like not rodent honestly, food. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, it feels different in the body. I will tell you that. Okay. So I'm dying to know what is in your haunted cart? What are the products, services, maybe just general philosophies that you've been thinking about a lot, but maybe you haven't, you know, exactly pulled the trigger on? Okay. What mostly haunts my cart? Cause I don't really shop for supplements and things like that because I am just inundated with all of them all the time. And same for skincare. Cause people are very generous. I'm on like, you know, like someone will send me a skincare product and it will last me a year. So that's not it for <laughs> me. It is like food and beverage. So I've been exploring like umami cart have you guys do you know about that what this no. sounds very up my alley i'm, I'm about to tell? google it right now google it so it's umami cart.com i believe and it's all like quote-unquote asian groceries that ship straight to your door so it's like all the fruits you could ever want to try all of the just every so it's like oh, perishable it's so goods cute, and too. dry goods and it's very cute and so that is what i've been perusing lately so pretty much just everything there especially fruits and bubble goods i love for just like shopping for like delicious things. I love Bubble Goods. Also a very cool founder. They have such a fun brand and like vibe and everything. Okay. Umami cart is, this is incredible. So cute. This is very up my alley. Somehow they also have nugs, plant-based nuggets, which is really interesting to me. Oh, <laughs> very fascinating. Fascinating. A little crossover. A hundred percent. Like who? Yeah, does... they must have the same investors. Exactly. Like who does Nugs know at Umami Cart? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is like a fun rabbit hole to dive into. And then I think like, I don't know, my haunted cart is like a lot of corduroy outfits for right now because it's <laughs> September. Yes. So just preparing for wearing nothing but corduroy for a few months. Well, if a, if a Canadian tuxedo is denim on denim, what kind of tuxedo is corduroy and corduroy? British, Scottish, <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> you know, ah, oh, you're going out to, to the countryside, like Paddington Bear, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> with your wellies, <laughs> with your wellies and your corduroy. I think I was just thinking that all the resale stores are now only buying for winter, and that had me thinking. Also, I was like, is this going to be a year where I wear corduroy? Because I never have. Well, you're moving to New York, so yeah, I think yeah, you're going to wear true. corduroy. You know what I love, though, for if you're living in cold weather, is the Girlfriend Collective puffer jackets. Oh. Are we familiar? We're familiar with Girlfriend Collective, but I didn't didn't know their puffer was such a strong get. I can't even tell. No one can see me, but I'm flailing my arms wildly. Like, yes, absolutely. So I was an early adopter, if I I may say, of Girlfriend Collective, but their sizing was crazy to me. Like, I'm like a 14, 16. Their sizing was, I am still confused about their sizing. It changes. It just kind of hurt hurt my feelings. And so I stopped ordering from them because I was like, you guys aren't making sense. You're lying to me. <laughs> and I just stopped ordering for a long time. But then a friend of mine had the puffer and I was like wearing it at her house. And the puffer is incredible. It's one of the best ones I've ever worn. It can be very affordable if you get it on sale. They have three lengths. They have a crop. They have a mid. They have a unisex. And then they have the long puffer. I have the short and the long. And they are so snug and comfy. You have to get one. Oh, I love this Don't idea. Big fan. Big fan. I've always wanted to don because I'm pretty short, but I've always wanted to wear the like full length, like cuts off right at my ankles. I have one and I should give you mine because I've had it since I lived in New York and it is worth it. You are like full. You're like New York lady when you're wearing that that full puffer. That's what I want. I yep. don't want to be perceived. Meanwhile, I'm like, how can I get the sluttiest puffer ever? <laughs> I want to yeah. do- <laughs> I feel 
what the girlfriend collective one is. If like the fabric yeah. feels, I feel like Ooh. sexy. I'm like, this is the best yes. fabric of all time. I also just got in the mail yesterday. I have not opened it. Alon, I thought it was Alana Cone, but someone told me it's Elena Cone. And I felt very dumb. Her flower print dress. I'm wearing her flower print print pants right now. And then I just got the dress. Trust. <laughs> you guys. How cute. Oh, so yeah. cute. And so I got the long t shirt dress. I'm obsessed with this flower print of hers. So I don't really have a lot of haunted carts because I'm an impulsive online shopper. <laughs> well, haunted cart is it's all of the above, right? You know, what's haunted you in the past, what's currently haunting you. We exercise our ghosts as much as possible. I can't really find the perfect Birkenstock clogs. Oh. That's haunting me. Yeah, like the covered ones, the Boston ones. Not the Boston. I ordered the ones that look like very fashion forward because I saw someone wearing them in New York and they were wearing the blue ones and they just make me look like the literal character of Goofy. They make me look like that <laughs> character. And so I have to return them, but they're very cool. They're very like, those are Birkenstocks. Like someone was like, are those Balenciaga? And he was like, no, they're Birkenstock. Wow. Which which model is this? This is does it have the strap? Mm -mm, it's the A. I want to say A six thirty. I love that you know it. Uh, Off the top. <laughs> you know what ones are haunting me? They did a collab with Proenza Schuler, I think, mm -hmm. that are silver metallic, and they're all over Depop. Ooh. Okay, Those are interesting. Fun. You know what I think you might what I might want to direct your attention cute? to, Lauren, mm. is the camper clocks. Okay, Camper has the best shoes. I stand Camper. They have these insane heels that are like Crocs material, and they're so cute. I want them desperately, but my feet are really swollen from being pregnant, so I have no idea what my true shoe size is. And they have a bunch of really cute stuff on the Camper website. And they're good for your feet. Thanks, guys. What else? We're this just shopping. Personal I'm so shopper. sorry. Yeah, this is a QVC pod. Um <laughs> I'd also say on the on the clog game, dance goes are a, a constant oh, classic, classic, right? But like, you know, they're not so fashion y. Um aren't, there we go. Aren't dance they? go girls. I think they are. I think the most fashionable people rock a dance go. But the other brand is Charlotte Stone. Have you heard of yes, Charlotte Stone? Big fan, have not try them on they run small so you have to go up a size but they have some really cute stuff right now so my fingers are flying i'm keyboard cap right in this moment <laughs> right in this moment are you going for comfort and style or are you really strictly more of a style person lauren well that's why i'm trying to get the right birkenstocks because i really want to have comfortable shoes but probably style let's be honest let's truly be honest great design marries the two that's right exactly like why shoes don't box me in you know don't try and contain me. Elevate me. I can't just do pure fashion. I have to do a little bit of comfort. I'm Pisces. I got a foot there. We got to be cozy. Yeah. We got to be cozy. It's true. We are working ladies. Working nine to five. What a way to make a living. Okay. Have you heard about Kibby Styles, Lauren? In my entire life, never. <laughs> I hadn't either. I got introduced to them via TikTok like a year ago. And I was like, I don't understand this. I'm stupid. And then recently I taught a class and someone said they're into Kibbe. And I was like, I don't get it. <gasps> and she sent me this video of like how to understand Kibbe styles. And now I'm like obsessed. You're so basically it. it's this like spectrum of style types, like based on your body proportions. And it's not like, oh, you're a pear or you're an hourglass. It's more like yang versus yin energy in the body, like and shapes in the body. And so you get like typed and then it tells you like the sort of formula for dressing. And and it's it's not like what's most quote unquote flattering. It's like what's in your line versus like out of line for you. And you can use that to look like more edgy or like more polished and put together and like more like yourself. So it's really cool, but it's also like really confusing. And I, I'm kind of obsessed with it. But take me through it. Like, is there a diagnostic? Like, what are the what are the categorizations? So like yin, yang sharp soft well, like i'm not an expert i'm just i'm just a humble beginner but basically yeah it's this spectrum and like some of the names are like gamine soft natural flamboyant natural romantic dramatic yeah and it like has to do with the proportions of your body even when like like let's say so i would be the same kibby st style as a pregnant person like who's gained X number of pounds, whose body looks different because it has more to do with like your bones, I think, and your like the size of your shoulders and the shape of your face and your, the size of your head versus like 
oh, you're overweight or you're underweight or whatever, or you're more muscular. It's a little less that, and it's more like actual angles and proportions, which I find very interesting. Like some of the descriptions are like vertical and curvy or width mm -hmm. and curvy or like petite and elongated or petite and curvy. I'm skeptical. Mm -hmm. I think that you should be. Is this a reskinning of like something that we don't like? So that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't like this. Like, I don't like this at all. But I started following this girl on YouTube and the way that she describes it and the people that she brings up to explain it. I'm like, oh, no, it's actually like cool and, and empowering. But, you know, I don't know the original dude. I just know these people who are on TikTok and these yeah. cool girls who are interpreting it in a way that feels inclusive and doesn't feel like body shaming mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. doesn't feel icky. That feels really like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like for me to, I don't know, not even feel comfortable in my skin, but like to kind of know what my body looks like and to choose to either dress in a way that highlights that or that like is in contrast to it because that's going to present a certain feel like I can be more edgy if I like break my line as a small person and like okay cool like great now I have some choice in the matter I think what's intriguing for me is like the intersection of fashion and new age thought and I'm like yes let's classify let's get something in here yeah. my yin and yang my meridians need those certain textures let's do it legit that's like what it's about it's about like the lines and stuff and breaking the line consciously or not also then you get your colors in i heard you talking about this on the podcast actually and then my friend took it well my friend took it to a whole new because she she brought it up the day after i listened to the podcast like a couple weeks ago about it and she was like have you ever heard of your colors and i was like as a matter <laughs> of fact I? <laughs> I just did but she was like it me yeah she was taking it like far more new age than i think it, it actually is so it's like you're a winter so your heart is cold <laughs> It's like about your auras and it's like about your auras and shock. Exactly. No, it like compliments or doesn't compliment like your, yeah, I think like energetic, like colors of your, your heart and soul kind of thing. I have to say, I have been noticing, let me say, let me put this on your watch list, an explosion of style coaches. But is it the yellow punch buggy thing where you're just looking for it and yes. I see it everywhere? <laughs> Probably. It's like your algorithm and you're like, have you guys seen? It's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I literally spoke into my phone and was like, show me style coaches. TikTok's like, oh, okay. Well, that's one, that's one haunted, sexy, unique scam for me is that I thrift a lot and I'm obsessed with ceramics. And so I saw this TikTok that heard Ooh. me say thrift multiple times. And so it was like, did you know all of your thrifted ceramics contain lead in the glazes, which I did not <gasps> I did not. No. And then my friend, the same one who knew about the colors was like, yeah, of course, that's why I don't buy vintage ceramics. So I ordered, but the testing kit that they were using on the TikTok video is so simple. It's like these little Q-tips that are red and you swab the glaze and then you put it in distilled vinegar. And if it turns a color, I think it means whatever, it turns a color, it has lead, it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm, I just ordered that. So I'm going to have to test all of my ceramics to make sure I'm not giving myself like an ancient illness. Please make a video of this. I'm yeah, this is fascinating. I, I love how your friend's like, of course. I couldn't believe <laughs> it. I yeah. mean, you know. But there is lead everywhere. When you go down that rabbit hole, it's in a lot of scary places where you're like, mm, it just lives in the scary. world. I mean, even in like, even in products, it's like we have to be careful about using roots or we have to have a disclaimer because California, I mean, we could talk about Prop 65 for an entire episode. I'll never forget being in line at a Sprouts checkout and a man was trying to return their protein because he was like, on the package it says there's lead in here and they wouldn't let him return it no you're having the lead <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're gonna make that smoothie and you're gonna like your lead smoothie god damn it <laughs> well there is that that idea that boomers are the way they are because they there's a lot more lead in paint in their what kids. i love that conspiracy theory yeah no no this theory that like there's more lead and like it it messed with their brain function and it like can it yields like more anger and aggression and like blah blah Rigid blah a bunch thinking. of other things yeah exactly it is a metal gosh wallet <laughs> hard one yes <laughs> coming Wait, in with it with the science it's yeah. a heavy metal yeah. they're a heavy generation you know that's true now we know why uh, we've done a lot of good work here today <laughs> okay. yeah i think we have good evening tonight's top story everything is awful lauren thank you so much for coming on the pod what can people look out for from Wooden Spoon Herbs? 
where can we send people? Well, woodenspoonherbs.com. We're on Instagram at woodenspoonherbs. We're on TikTok at woodenspoonherbs. And okay, TikTok. Okay, TikTok. Hi. We're on Pinterest. We're on, no, I'm just kidding. We are, but yeah, you can find <laughs> us everywhere. Our handle everywhere is woodenspoonherbs. And yeah, it's going to be an exciting year. In a couple of months, we have some new SKUs dropping, maybe an herbal emergency type beverage, maybe a blue <gasps> lemonade magnesium. We don't know. We don't know. But maybe Ooh. oh my gosh, all of that. Lemonade. So stay tuned. Follow us wherever you follow people. You know that as soon as it drops, we'll be talking about it on the pod. So. Absolutely, we will. We'll make sure your your blue's my favorite flavor. So <laughs> that is right up my alley. <laughs> blue is the best flavor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Lauren, this is a dream. You're the best. Thanks, guys. We did it. That's the end. Okay, guys. I'm not sure if you know. It's now called Shop My, and we have a list from pretty much every episode of the pod. We have the products we've talked about, the products we recommend, and it's also a way to support the pod while you shop. We do get a little tiny minuscule kickback from Shop So if you're going to get any of these things, it's kind of cool to do it on here, and we've got a lot of good recos. We also each have curated on the team our own shop list. So I'm always adding to mine personally of things that I really like. And there's a couple of actually like top things that people have really enjoyed. I got to know. Um, okay. I'm going to keep it under $100 because yeah. there's, there's some stuff that people are really liking. Okay. The Durham Store Ice Globes. Those little globes that you use to massage your face. Whoa. Yeah. Moon juice super you. Mm, which I will say ever a classic. It's it it's good and it works. The mod vibe personal massager. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Honestly we love mod. Mm-hmm. We stand mod. And Kosas by I mean Kosas and Jones Road are by far the two biggest like cosmetic brands that people love to buy. So the Kosas Brow Pop people are obsessed with and jones road it's like everything across the board but a lot of people have bought the miracle bomb which you and i both have and are obsessed with as well okay, it's I, we purchase. want it in like every single color it's so good yeah. yeah kosas has a new product i actually added it to my shop because i haven't tried it yet but i really want to it is a organic lash and eyebrow growth support thing oh shit yeah it's supposed to be work really really well let me look up the name. Hold on one sec. Okay. It's called Grow Potion Fluffy Brow and Lash Boosting Serum. It's clean and vegan. And there are some serums that have like prostaglandins in them. That's what basically mm. like Grande Lash has or over-the-counter products have. And that's what can give you discoloration in your eyes or can be really oh. like abrasive. You mm. also can't use it if you're pregnant or trying to conceive. Mm-hmm. And it looks like Kosas Grow Potion does not have that problem. <laughs> so it looks really cool. So we're going to give away one Grow Potion. It is $48, so it ain't cheap. 97% of people saw, after 12 weeks of use, clinically measured improvement in brow length and lash volume. So okay. if you want to win... <laughs> That's... I, Honestly, I don't know. I want to win. I want to win too. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Please submit a five-star review. And we will pick you as long as you're the funniest, cutest, smartest review. (laughs) (laughs) And we will announce the winner on next week's episode. Honestly, great prize. Worth it. You have a good chance. Lots of people win. It's true. (laughs) It's true. Lots of people win. And that's it. Bonnie's like, you're done. (laughs) You know it's over? It's over. It's over, kid. Don't change. Or do. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Good For You is produced by yours truly, Wallace Miller Blanchard. Our theme song is by Parallel Dance Ensemble. And our wonderful editing is done by Softer Sound Studio. You can find more information about at the link in our show notes.